Here's a bit of advice. Learn how to thicken your skin. Not every quote unquote hate comment needs a community post or a tweet. The amount of times you sit here and have Twitter and YouTube comment fights with people despite even saying yourself that you don't have time for it is honestly ridiculous. Seriously step away from the computer. I'm sure you are well aware this is the internet. People are always going to say things that you don't agree with, but if you try and combat every single instance of that happening, you're going to spiral out of control and make yourself look worse. There's only so many times you can post a screenshot and fish for pity. Hey there, I'm back to interrupt your regularly scheduled entertainment. Please do not go and harass anyone mentioned in this video. Everything talked about in this video is alleged until proven in a court of law. Some things mentioned in this video might be speculation on my behalf, but I will remain respectful to the victims discussed in this video. Content warnings for this video include mentions of self-harm, including suicide, racism, and domestic abuse. If you are sensitive to any of the before-mentioned content warnings, please look at the screen now and take note of the timestamps listed. All relevant links can be found in the description. Today, I want to talk about Kai Weiss, also known as Prince Kai and Trainer Kai, among a few other names. A content creator who turned a disagreeable personality, prone to engaging in online drama, into something far more dangerous. Kai was a YouTube creator a part of the drama and commentary community, arguably possibly also a part of the rant community, just given how passionate he can get during some of his videos. Kai's tendency to poorly word his points put him in a lot of hot water fairly frequently, Notably, the times in which he insinuated that fellow YouTuber Hopeless Peaches was using self-harm language to evoke sympathy from their audience, and issuing a copyright strike against a small creator called Akumu. One thing that Kai had been very well known for was being the romantic partner to Omnia. I personally learned about him through their channel and have quoted both of them in my previous video about creep show art. Unfortunately, things have not progressed well for Kai since that video. So let's break down some of the stuff that's happened with Kai as of late. On November 1st, 2021, Kai issued a copyright strike to the small creator called Ikumu. When faced with backlash over the situation, Kai made a statement on his channel about enduring long-standing harassment from Ikumu through Twitter and YouTube and how he issued the strike on Ikumu's channel for using long, unedited clips from his videos. Which I do see that some people are pointing out that Kai had previously stated that people should use his whole video to make points against him so that they couldn't cut out context from his points. I wanted to put your entire video in mind so people could see everything you have to say rather than just parts so of you it. You criticized me for cutting context because I didn't put every DM in my video, but you didn't put my full video in your video. I'm unable to determine if this was sarcastic or not. However, it is worth noting that Kai in the past had used almost entirety of another creator's video for one of his videos, excluding maybe about 20 seconds of the original. The backlash of the situation stems from many people, while not liking Akumu, agreeing that Akumu's use of Kai's clips was technically fair use. Which stating for the record, I did go and watch the Akumu video for context on the situation. It's going to be a yikes for me. It was a lot to unpack. Notwithstanding subject matter, the clips could have been cut up significantly more and each point could have been commented on while the point was being made in Kai's original video, but this isn't really a critique on Akumu's video. Upon watching Akuma's video, I do see how and why it made Kai upset. While Kai didn't make great points in his video that Akuma was responding to, Akuma made even worse points in my opinion. But sadly, just because you don't like what someone is saying about you, sometimes you just really can't do anything about it. People are always going to say things that you don't agree with, but if you try and combat every single instance of that happening, you're going to spiral out of control and make yourself look worse. The best course of action is just to block and ignore, especially because the only people who are going to side with his points in his video are people that think like him, which obviously are not going to be your audience by default. By striking his channel, if he would appeal it and YouTube deemed it fair use, you could be the one getting in trouble for abusing the copyright system. This ended up causing a lot of bickering via Twitter and YouTube on whether or not the use of the clips in Nakumu's video was fair use or not. Kai doubled down through the backlash, stating on Twitter that he would not remove the strike because it was entertaining to see Akumu and others mad. After having a debate with John Swan and seemingly to apologize on Twitter, Kai deleted his Twitter account but then reinstated it shortly after and basically became that goofy meme presumably trolling his detractors by stating that he would copyright strike other channels for using his content in their videos. 
it honestly became a little unhinged. One creator called Spy V inserted themselves into the situation by posting a sassy tweet about Kai needing to shut up during his little Twitter frenzy. Given the nature of his Twitter explosion at this time, he did not take this tweet gracefully. He opted instead to edit Spivey's tweet and insert a racial slur into the mix, which Spivey claimed someone had to ask for clarification if they had actually used the slur or not. Inserting my own opinion here, this action was kind of unwarranted given everything else. I can actually really sympathize with Kai during the Okumu situation. Okumu is your run-of-the-mill devil's advocate type who self-admits in his video response to Kai that he ruffles up people for entertainment. He ended up going on a rather large and worrisome tirade about racism in his video, so I can understand how tensions could have been running a little high for Kai after watching it, especially after people jumped to Akuma's defense over the copyright strike. It's understandable that Kai, while upset, could have misinterpreted people coming to Akuma's defense as also aligning themselves with his, frankly, racist takes. However, I also believe that he should have taken a step back from Twitter and collected himself a bit better. What was it about Spy V's tweet in particular that read as having a racial undertone? I've only watched a couple of Spy V's videos in relation to this situation and the creep show art situation from June 2021, so I'm unaware if Spy V had even insinuated something with a direct racial undertone in the past. Feel free to comment if they have, I guess. Spy V's tweet was not even made in defense of Akumu, nor was it even really about the copyright strike that Kai had issued at all, and that's why I feel it was a little unwarranted to try to instigate with them. This pulls back around to the point of, sometimes people are just going to say things about you and you're not going to like them. Spy V's tweet wasn't the only tweet that Kai has interpreted as having a racial undertone to it, but many of these are completely irrelevant to the situation, unfortunately. With Akuma's targeted harassment, I feel like one of the best courses of action to take after blocking would have been to start documenting the harassment and report him via Twitter, YouTube, and any other socials that he was bothering you on. Cyber harassment is a tricky subject matter to navigate, especially since he admits to using incognito tabs to keep track of people after they've blocked him, and even alt accounts. Which, yes, this is considered stalking. Other testaments allude that Akumu had targeted others in the past, and by simply not engaging with him, he eventually moved on to a new target. You shouldn't be losing to Akumu on Twitter. The one time Akumu tried to argue with me, I figured out real quick that this guy's a debate lord whose only objective is to win on the internet. So you know what I did, Kai? I let him win. Why? Because when I award them a victory, they literally don't know what to do with themselves. Just let it be known, though, that I don't think this is right either. I don't feel that it's right to just hope ignoring someone is enough to silence them after they've continued to torment an individual. I feel the community as a whole needs to find a way to solve this together that doesn't abuse the copyright system of YouTube. As much as it pains me to say it, I do believe that copyright striking his channel was the complete wrong move to make, not in relation at all to the legality of it, whether the use of Kai's clips was fair use or not, but rather that this situation brought a lot of attention to a very toxic individual. Countless people, myself included, have sought out this infamous Akumu video. Let's just take a look at his analytics that I pulled from Social Blade. You see that massive jump? That jump happened in November after the copyright strike. This means that since you fed the troll, he went from gaining maybe 1 to 8 subscribers a month, or that rare 40 subscribers a month, to gaining over 400 in a month. And you know this happened due to the copyright strike, because all of his content for the month of November centered around Kai and the situation. You continue to engage with him, and he milked the situation for everything it was worth. This means he was getting more views, which was pushing him into the algorithm more, which in turn was going to expose him to more trolls and bigots, thus giving him an even bigger platform to spread his narratives. I don't want that, and I'm sure Kai didn't want that, but here we are. Kai went on to upload a video to his YouTube channel discussing why he put the strike on Akuma's video. Insisting he did not feel that the video was fair use and how he was not sorry for striking the video and even made a call to action, suggesting that other creators follow his example and strike other videos Akumu had made. He states that he didn't put the strike on Akumu's video out of malice, but... You put a strike on Akumu's channel with the intention to bring the video down, which is typically viewed as pretty harmful to a content creator. It's pretty taboo to do this in general when it comes to commentary. Regardless of what Akumu stated in his video, what he did was barely any different from what every other commentary channel tends to do, yourself included. 
Kai also made all of these tweets that paint the narrative that he was well aware that the strike was not fair and did it anyway. You make it a point that you don't like Akumu, which, valid. Uh, from the single video I've watched, I don't like him either. But if you're going to strike his video for infringing your copyright, I think it would only be fair to start striking other channels as well for doing the same exact thing. Specifically doing it just because you don't like what someone said about you creates a double standard. But I guess you did mention this idea on Twitter, so... During the height of the copyright strike situation, Kai was discussed and invited onto a stream hosted by creator John Swan. Tensions were still very noticeably high and chaos ensued. It was honestly very painful to watch between the both of them. John Swan's stream starts going through the legality of fair use and even cites examples of court proceedings that had ruled in favor of the creators who used clips from other creators. John references a case that notably featured a video in which the creator did not add or change anything to the original content and only cut up and rearranged the clips and that was deemed fair use. He even referred to cases in which the content had been re-uploaded in its entirety with no changes and deemed fair use since it was considered archival. During the stream, John Swan also points out that Kai had used long, unedited clips from other content creators' videos, and even the vast majority of another creator's video for one of his videos. As you can see, Kai's entire video is 20 minutes long, right? Kai's entire video on Sen, I've downloaded the whole thing, it's 20 minutes long. In this video, you'll see clips interspersed of Sen's video about Kai. This is a response video, by the way. This is a response video to Sen, and you'll see throughout here, you see clips interspersed, right? You'll see many clips interspersed. Um, now, how much of this is Kai's video, like Kai's own work? 12 minutes. How much of it is Sen's video? Eight minutes. And 20 seconds! Guys, I don't know if you know maths, but that equates to 41%. Many of John's points paint Kai out to frankly be a hypocrite, especially if we look at these tweets in which Kai comments that anything over 40% of someone else's content should not be deemed fair use. After going through the court case examples, some of Kai's previous video statements, tweets, and even showing proof of just how much of another content creator Kai has used in his own videos, John finally brings Kai himself to the stream for a debate. John, I doubt you're watching this since I'm literally just recapping a video that you yourself recorded and experienced, but um, you need a moderator for debates, especially one like this. Both of you talking over one another is actually agonizing to listen to. We start the debate off with Kai asking about why Omnia is featured in the thumbnail to John Swan's stream, but John Swan says that he was planning to discuss points Omnia had made on Twitter in regards to this situation, but had just yet to get to them. Kai mentions bringing up other channels besides Omnia and lists off other YouTubers. John refutes this by stating that there was no need to comment on those channels because they all agree with his point of view. John also states that the reason why he was going to go through the points that Omnia had made specifically was because of the credibility that Omnia had within the community. I am also acknowledging that John flat out states, yes, Because I can. During the beginning of this line of questioning, which might have been the start of the debate crumbling into nonsense, while it could have just been a joke, it did come off as a bit aggressive. The subject of Omnia rapidly changes to why John believes he is in the right. He brings up that he had thoroughly researched copyright law, including the before-mentioned court case examples. However, Kai is quick to try to discredit John by asking if he studied American copyright law specifically. Now let's just give Kai the benefit of the doubt. Maybe I was too quick to say that he was trying to discredit John. But then John points out that the YouTube copyright system is American. But then Kai infamously says that John shouldn't be commenting on the legality of the strike since he doesn't have a certifiable background. Despite my best efforts to give Kai the benefit of the doubt that I mentioned before, we're going to see a pattern of deflect, discredit, and divert. When do you need a certifiable background to comment on anything? Does the announcer speculating on who will win the big football game need to have physically been on the field and play football to justify their theory? No, they just need to have watched enough games to be able to form an opinion on which team is better. If you hire someone to fix your sink and they leave it leaking worse than before, are you just going to trust them that they fixed it because they have a certifiable background? No, if you see that they did something wrong, you have every right to tell them that they did something wrong. Did you have a certifiable background in psychology to weigh in on Hopeless Peaches' mental health when you called them a sympathy seeker? 
Of course not. You had an opinion and you stated it. John Swan doesn't need to have a certified background in law in order to research YouTube copyright and cite real life court case examples in order to validate his points against you. It's commentary. After a ton of bickering, they finally move on to why Kai felt justified in striking Akumu's content, citing that Akumu had used long unedited clips of his content and felt that he didn't add anything to the original which is objectively false, as Okumu not only commented through the clips, but also added a filter to the clips. John brings up immediately that Kai has also done the same thing, using long unedited clips from other creators' videos, and Kai counters that it is not unedited because he added an overlay. On Twitter, Kai has also faced criticisms about how transformative his use of other creators' clips have been and justified his use because he made the video float on the screen. So you're fine when you use clips and do the absolute bare minimum to change the clip, but a filter isn't enough? And I only mention this stupid filter because Kai incessantly thinks that transformative means you literally have to physically alter the material you're using, which is not true. This deflection is a moot point anyway, since I believe that Kai would have struck the video regardless of what Okumu had or hadn't done to the clips. This entire situation was never actually about the use of the clips, but rather who made the video and what they said about Kai in it. Again, I bring up the fact that no one else is blowing up about Kai striking any other videos that have used his clips. After this, John brings up the court case examples that he cited earlier, but Kai talks over and interrupts most of John's attempts at explaining what happened during the court case and why it happened. Like, stop quacking, bro. Like, Kai mentions during this that John needed to have watched the video that the court case was referencing in order to use it as a talking point, which I disagree with. The talking point is the court case itself. The document the court provided is enough. No one specifically needs to know how the original content was spliced together, but just that by editing the original content, it was deemed fair use. I've mentioned a few times this entire debate was incredibly frustrating, but why is Kai treating this live stream as a closed book test? Berating John for wanting to find the exact passage of the court document so that he didn't misquote it. You've mentioned it frequently before that you're always being taken out of context, but now you won't allow someone else to put themselves into context for you? Then we get into the time that Kai used the entirety of someone else's video, sans about 20 seconds, and the conversation broke down once again with senseless bickering between the two of them until the end of the debate without Kai actually attempting to address the points that John brought against him. Sometime after the debate, Kai goes on to state on Twitter that while he still felt justified for striking Akumu's video, he could have handled it better, citing that the ongoing harassment from the situation had opened his eyes. Additionally, he makes comments about quitting and that he's not like the rest of the commentary community, which I always thought he was. Every commentary video is so close and structured to one another, it's almost like they all follow a template. Be known, I'm no exception to this, but I'm more of a lurker than an active participant. Eventually, Kai would end up deleting the Prince Kai YouTube channel, which is a flex. I couldn't fathom deleting a channel that made me money, but I'm also poor, so that opinion's not really relevant. One could have hoped that this would have been the end of the situation, or at least the publicity of it all. But of course it wasn't. This is when Kai returned to Twitter and started posting all of the garbled nonsense that I mentioned towards the beginning of this video, trolling the community with threats of also copyright striking other creators, shouting obscene things into the void, and even attempting to instigate further conflict with uninvolved parties. This entire situation is reeks of the Veronica Wang versus Shukbong situation that happened a while ago, where she issued a copyright strike against a video that she didn't like. In my opinion, it is quite possible that Veronica became upset about these videos and wanted to find a valid excuse to remove them. Double down on her decision to do so despite the backlash she received. I do not regret copyright striking those videos. I do not regret standing up for myself. And I will not address anybody who is making titles about me from here on out for views because they're shady they're liars and they're painting me to be this horrible person when i do nothing except spread love every single day of my life everyone else can honestly seriously and i'm saying this wholeheartedly can go f themselves eventually cave due to the backlash apologized I was told this i realized how wrong i was and that i do owe everyone an apology mm -hmm. so i want to make it very clear now that i am so sorry to everyone but then went on to discredit her detractors anyway with her friends during another mukbang video. This entire copyright strike situation that happened with Kai spanned roughly two weeks. It was a messy situation where both parties had definitely done something wrong and justice was never really served either way. 
But Kai could have slowly picked up the pieces of his shattered credibility and reputation. He could have taken his time away from YouTube and Twitter to reflect on the situation and even seek out alternatives to the decision he made in striking that infamous video. He later shows screenshots of people reaching out to him and trying to comfort him through this stressful time. He could have bounced back from this, as many people in his situation have done before. But then Kai fell into another scandal. This time around, however, it wasn't petty drama over YouTube. This segment is much heavier. It's going to illustrate something called DARVO, which stands for Deny, Attack, and Reverse Victim and Offender. I'm going to treat this section of the video under the immediate pretense that the victim of the situation is Omnia. This is due to the statistical average of false accusations in cases of assault being between 2 and 6%. On December 9th, under a new username on Twitter, Omnia posted a thread detailing how they had broken up with Kai due to him allegedly abusing them. This thread goes on to depict not only emotional and verbal abuse Omnia had been enduring during their relationship, but they also supply photographs of bruising to illustrate the physical abuse that Kai had inflicted upon them. Kai retaliates against this by stating that he only hit them under self-defense, insisting that Omnia had been the abuser in the relationship. His counterclaim states that they were the one that would hit him constantly and instigate a fight by insisting that he hit them back. This is difficult for him to prove to be the case, as he did not supply any photos of bruising or other wounds Omnia could have inflicted upon him, while Omnia did have photos of their own injuries from the altercation. Omnia even states that they had gone and seen a doctor to legally document the injuries that they have. One photo in particular is most damning, and that's the one of the obvious handprint on their arm. The other bruising could have been argued away as any number of other accidents, but the handprint is pretty definitive proof that at least a physical altercation did occur, as leaving this kind of print on yourself would be hard, if not impossible. If you try to recreate this mark on your own arm, the orientation of the hand would be messed up. Either the thumb is facing the wrong way, or the entire print is upside down. Omnia claims that Kai had pinned them down and began to beat them, but Kai claims that he had grabbed them and pushed Omnia to the floor, which could explain the positioning of the handprint. However, it doesn't explain the giant awkward bruise placed on the inside of their other arm, which looks like something heavy had fallen onto them, like a knee. Kai also says that if he had pinned Omnia down to cause these injuries, that there would be a lot more damage, which is an opinion. The amount of damage done to a person is controlled by the abuser. If you don't mean to leave long-lasting injuries, you don't have to. It's completely plausible for the abuser to do just enough damage to instill fear upon their victim. If by any circumstances this could have started in self-defense somehow, we get into another pretty extensive legal rabbit hole. Self-defense statutes in America only go as far as to exhibit a reasonably objective amount of force when presented with the fear of injury or death. Reasonably objective is where the line gets murky, but in most cases this is regarded as simply using enough force to get out of the situation. Since Kai has not shown any depictions of bruising or other wounds while Omnia has, one can assume that under the very rare instance that this could have started as self-defense, it stopped being so when Kai exerted force greater than what he had endured and ignored the duty to retreat from the situation once the threat had been de-escalated. But again, without any proof on Kai's part, the argument that this was done in self-defense is very flimsy at best. He actually doesn't spend that much time on the self-defense argument at first and instead starts to obsessively hold over all the times that he ever spent money on Omnia. He starts supplying screenshots of conversations that he had with Omnia, citing that these screenshots show that Omnia was using him for his money, which this screenshot show them talking about a lamp in a vacuum, except the lamp message has Omnia saying, you asked about. He also includes a photo of transaction history for a couple days worth of stuff. He claims that he filed a claim with his bank to get his money back for the stuff on the list, but I don't think banks just willfully return cash you spent just because you're mad that your relationship ended, especially if they get a hold of this tweet in which you admit that you're only filing the claim due to your breakup. This is fraud because this is money that you willfully spent. It was not stolen from you. The situation doesn't end with Omnia's assault that took place on December 3rd. They continue their Twitter thread detailing about how all of their socials had been deleted. This includes their YouTube channel, which was one of their major sources of income after having been cut off from their family, which they allege that their socials being deleted and them being cut off from their family was both due to Kai's influence. Kai also denies the accusation of deleting Omnia's social media accounts, insisting that he didn't know how or why they were deleted, nor by whom. 
However, during an attack on Omnia's character in an effort to show that they are a two-faced manipulator, Kai supplies screenshots of private DM conversations between Omnia and others, from Omnia's perspective. When questioned how he had these screenshots, despite insisting that he did not have access to Omnia's accounts, Kai states that he had access the time he got these screenshots because he was allowed to have access. He says he caught them in a lie and took the screenshots as a precaution. But really, if you were trying to document them saying something shitty, why not take screenshots of far more incriminating material? One of the screenshots presented, which Kai says shows Omnia being two-faced and that Thuman is also two-faced, shows what appears to be Omnia and Thuman teasing Kai about wanting to do something with Omnia as a couple. This screenshot doesn't immediately read as malicious to an outside observer, unless there's something more incriminating before or after this message. To the outside observer that knows nothing about Kai or Omnia or even Thuman, this is just a matter of which voice you read the message in. The children, I will take care of them. Why are you being all evil? Hear it in my voice, okay? As for the children, let me take care of them. When you say it like that, I, I do want to be taken care of. This screenshot isn't really that much of a smoking gun that Kai had access to Omnia's accounts around the time that the accounts were deleted, because this screenshot is time marked, not date marked, meaning he likely got the screenshot the same day the conversation took place. The second screenshot in this thread, which is also time marked, not date marked, so he must have gotten this within a day of the chat happening, is from a group chat where Omnia is expressing being uncomfortable with someone's advances and saying yes, presumably to a date, because they didn't want any kind of public fallout from rejecting the advances. Kai says that this is about him, which is a red flag. This does not make him look better, and I don't know why he thought it did. In the tweet the screenshot is from, Kai expresses disbelief at the concept that someone could guilt trip another person into being in a relationship. This is dismissing a very real issue in everyday life that majorly affects femme presenting people. Guilt tripping someone to get your way is a type of coercion, and it happens literally all the time. Having someone believe that their reputation, livelihood, or safety is on the line if they say no is how you can guilt trip someone into being in a relationship. Google is literally a click or a tap away to find more information about coercion and how a lot of people are assaulted and murdered every year for simply saying no. And Omnia states literally in the message that you graciously provided that they felt that there would be public repercussions if they said no. As I mentioned before, this second screenshot is time marked and not date marked, so he must have gotten this screenshot shortly after the conversation happened. But if Omnia was so strict with their socials as you claim, how do you have two time marked screenshots taken from their account? Why would they allow you onto their socials when they were supposedly talking about you in such an incriminating manner? This doesn't make any sense logically. It just looks like you snooped through their phone while they weren't looking, and you mentioned you knew that something like this was going to happen so that you took these screenshots in advance. Why? Why start a relationship with someone you know you can't trust? Again, logically, this just doesn't make any sense. But like, I'm super asexual and maybe I just don't understand because I don't associate myself with people that are going to look for excuses to cause drama with me. In the third screenshot, we see a private conversation between Omnia and Thuman. This screenshot shows Thuman sending Omnia a screenshot of a conversation with Kai. Kai says that this screenshot is supposed to represent how Omnia was cheating on a previous partner with him. Which again, this screenshot conversation just shows Kai stating that Omnia was mistreating someone they considered a friend. And outside observers who know nothing about any of them are just supposed to interpret this as what Kai stated, but there's really no definitive proof in this screenshot that the conversation had been about an unfaithful relationship. Only Kai's word. If he was the one having the conversation with Thuman about Omnia cheating, why is he not showing screenshots from his own account proving that this is what the conversation was originally about? You were so set on getting all these other screenshots from Omnia's account as a precaution in case they tried to cause problems for you, but you didn't take a screenshot from your own account of a conversation you had with someone about Omnia cheating? Even if you deleted that account that the conversation happened on, it still doesn't make sense. Kai supplying that he had this screenshot in particular is actually kind of damning evidence against him, because this screenshot, unlike the other two, has a date marker and not a time marker. This means that there was the potential for this screenshot to have been taken days, weeks, months, or even longer after the conversation was had. This screenshot has also been cropped, so it makes it even harder to tell when this screenshot was taken, because when you scroll up in your message history on Twitter, you'll get a blue arrow to return you to the most recent messages. Omnia states that the reason why they believe that Kai was the one responsible for locking them out of 
and deleting their accounts is because they had entrusted the passwords for these accounts to him during the course of their relationship. Naturally, Kai denies that this is true, instead stating that Omnia was the one attempting to control his social media instead. His evidence for this claim was just showing he was the manager of Omnia's YouTube channel, and also later showing that Omnia was a manager on his channel, which, uh, yeah, technically managers can't delete the channel, but showing you were the manager of the account doesn't prove that Omnia was controlling your social media, and it also doesn't disprove that you were or were not the one to delete Omnia's channel. When asked about how he had access to their accounts when getting those screenshots I showed earlier, he admits to knowing their passcodes, which isn't a great look benefit of the doubt here, assuming that Omnia was the one to give you this passcode and you just didn't happen to see them and memorize it and then use it to snoop later, this is a complete violation of their trust using their passcode to go on their phone and then get all these screenshots from their accounts. He says he didn't have time to delete their socials because he was so busy getting back to his home that was an hour away. I might be looking far too into this, but traveling in a car as a passenger for an hour seems like Plenty enough time to fuck with someone's accounts if you had access to them. Especially since a mobile hotspot is included in the T-Mobile simply prepaid plan that he shows having a receipt for. And I only mention the hotspot because even if he did not have the previous knowledge of these passwords, Omnia also stated that he had stolen an iPad from their apartment with all of their accounts logged into it and had their passwords saved to which he has admitted that he had Omnia's passcode and if Omnia was using the same passcode on the iPad as their phone, you can easily view all of the saved passwords. So you set up the hotspot on your phone and then hook that iPad up to that hotspot to give it a Wi-Fi connection, and then an hour-long car ride, it's plenty enough time to fuck with someone's social media. Also, no, I say passenger because he mentioned his brother helping him and has screenshots mentioning using Lyft, so one can assume that he either doesn't have his own car or doesn't have a license. Also, this whole hotspot thing is just speculation on my behalf. He will later state in his twit longer that he was out of the apartment before 8pm and Omnia's social media began getting deleted around 11. And he also says on Twitter and again on the twit longer that he never even took the iPad. Also, in that phone bill receipt, it says that the second line had been suspended. What time was that line suspended? This is only relevant because, again, in the twit longer he posted in January, Kai tries to explain away the possibility of him hacking into Omnia's account by saying that they should have gotten a two-factor authentication message sent to their phone if he was the one hacking into their account. But two-factor authentication is surprisingly actually pretty easy to bypass in a variety of ways, including logging into the account just using a device that had already been approved access in the past. In addition, Omnia also states that Kai had stolen a variety of other things from their home before leaving on December 8th due to the protective order that Omnia filed. Some of the things Omnia list are the before-mentioned iPad, an Apple Pencil, a speaker, clothes, and even cat food, among other things. As you can imagine from everything else in this situation thus far, Kai denies stealing anything from Omnia's apartment. He claims he was just taking back his things after the breakup. But again, he also tweeted out some pretty incriminating messages. <laughs> Like this one, where he specifically says that he gave the stuff to Omnia, and then later he backtracks and tries to clarify that it was stuff for Omnia to use but not keep. But going back in time to the messages that Kai wrote about giving the stuff to Omnia, he writes that the stuff he took back from them is his now, alluding to the fact that he was aware that it wasn't before, but decided that it was while leaving because he paid for it. Which isn't how gifting things works at all. So these tweets are going to look pretty bad in core if and when they're brought up. In the twit longer, he claims he doesn't have Omnia's things besides a clothing basket and a backpack, which he says he's going to get back to them. So is he saying now that he no longer has any of the things he previously admitted to taking, like the clothes or the shoes, or is he still claiming that they belong to him since he paid for them? I imagine it's the latter, since also in this twit longer, he goes on to say that Omnia was apparently well aware of the possibility of him taking back everything he bought if they ever split which again, is not how gifting works. In the beginning of his tweeting frenzy, I find it curious how Kai posts a screenshot of himself confronting Omnia and where they were. The screenshot shows that Kai is outright stating that he is tracking where Omnia was. He presents this information with the tweet that they were lying about where they were and plotting to ruin his life, which is concerning to anyone familiar with domestic abuse situations. 
I understand we live in a scary world, but your significant other does not need to update you on their whereabouts every waking second of the day, and you do not need to be literally tracking their location as seen in this confrontation. This isn't the big gotcha that Kai thinks it is. It actually makes him look very controlling. Which, dipping a little into the controlling aspect, Omnia claims that the reason they were cut off from their family is because of Kai outing them, which would be another aspect of an abuser controlling their victim by cutting them off of their support network and forcing the victim to rely more and more on the abuser. Which, yes, Omnia does have internet friends, that much is obvious, but are any of those internet friends close enough to run to in case something goes wrong? Kai tries to dispute the allegation that he caused Omnia's family to cut them off in his twit longer, stating that Omnia was making a choice not to talk to their parents, not that their parents cut them off, but he doesn't deny outing them to their family. He describes this situation as Omnia purposely plotting to ruin his life with a false accusation, but if he was really doing so much for them every waking second of the day like he repeatedly tries to claim, what benefit does Omnia get in making a false allegation? If Omnia really was only with you for the things that you were buying them, what would have triggered them to try to get rid of you? Did you tell them that you no longer wanted to pay for their things? You've not once stated in all of your tweets, nor the twit longer, that you ever mentioned trying to cut them off financially. Was it the fact that you deleted your YouTube channel so you didn't have that income? Seems unlikely because you admit to having other jobs, thus you can still pay for things for them. Neither you nor Omnia have ever mentioned anybody else in the picture that could have been someone that Omnia wanted to go to instead. I say it again sternly, this argument just doesn't make any sense logically. It's extremely evident that Kai has no prior experience with domestic violence or victims of trauma, because he also supplies a screenshot of a conversation he was having with Omnia, captioning the tweet with, how can you speak this casually to someone who just be abusing you? Since he isn't doing the legwork himself, I'll inform everyone how you can appear casual to someone who is just abusing you. There are four F's of fear. When you are faced with a situation that makes you scared, frightened, uncomfortable, they are extremely common for someone who faces abuse or certain mental health issues that can lead to a lot of day-to-day -day anxieties. Two of these Fs are ones that most people are actually pretty familiar with, and that's fight or flight, either lash out or run away. However, the two less familiar Fs are faint and fawn. Faint is when you freeze up and just can't do anything, like a deer caught in the headlights of oncoming traffic. The last F is how someone can speak casually to someone who was just abusing them. Fawning is when a victim will try to appease their abuser in order to try to placate them enough for them to no longer be an immediate threat. This response is actually how the term Stockholm Syndrome originated, where hostages were nice to their captors and this trauma response was mistaken for liking or even falling in love with their captors. Might I also be briefly petty here for a moment, but again, this conversation shows Kai asking about the lamp. He then makes some other pretty irrelevant tweets regarding everything, like mentioning a trip to Disney World, which again is explained away as fawning and not some evil malicious gold digger out to get your money. He also makes this woe well is me tweet about how he just bought Omnia a new iPad as a surprise and the surprise is ruined now because of all of this. Don't you feel so bad that you're not getting this new iPad? It's completely irrelevant to the situation. Omnia states in one tweet that the reason they were so adamant about defending Kai through some of the more questionable scandals is because of the fear of repercussions if they didn't. Kai appears to outright mock this sentiment by showing other individuals comforting him through stuff. Are Thuman and Dulu only defending me out of fear I'd abuse them? Every time he's ever brought up a third party, Thuman, Dulu, Peaches, it's been completely irrelevant to the situation at hand. Unless one of them was an eyewitness to the altercation as it happened, or Omnia had confessed this major big plot to one of them, there's no point in trying to destroy their character or use them in your favor. Omnia allegedly photoshopping something about Peaches is not relevant to the abuse and theft accusation. Omnia and Thuman teasing you over couple shirts is not relevant. Being in a group chat with other content creators and the group making plans to release similar videos is not relevant. Taking a step back for a moment and looking back at the screenshot that Kai has supplied where he was dismissing the notion that someone could be coerced into a relationship. Omnia states that they had said yes out of the fear of public fallout. And that screenshot is from a conversation Kai claims he was not a part of. And it shows that the fear that Omnia is describing here about the reason why they were defending Kai through so much stuff, it had always been there from the start of the relationship. It was built upon rotten foundation from the start and sadly always doomed to fail. And while everything that's happened thus far has been absolutely terrible, there is a silver lining to Omnia's tale, and one that I am thankful for. They were able to get away.
so many other people in this situation and other similar situations, they're just not as lucky. I hope Omnia stays safe leading up to and after the court hearing for this case. One of the many tweets Kai had made about this situation, he says, What you are reading is claims that I stole and abused them. What I am giving is evidence that what they claimed was stolen were items I bought and what happened to them was an act of self-defense. But is it? When presented with these allegations, Kai denied the allegations, attacked Omnia's character, and reversed their roles to make himself the victim instead. This is Darvo. Kai has a habit of minimizing his own actions and blaming everyone else for the things he has openly said himself. Yes, sometimes people have misinterpreted what he had said in the past, but that's just the nature of people. Sometimes they have their own preconceived notions of a situation and it's hard to convince them of a different perspective. However, not every disagreement Kai has ever gotten himself into is just due to people misinterpreting his words. I also just want to note through all of this, Kai's original tweets and his twit longer, he continuously and casually airs out very serious mental health struggles that Omnia was and possibly still are facing to this day. While I don't know if they were fairly open about these mental health struggles on their social media prior, since all of their original accounts have been deleted, but regardless of whether they were or not, I think it's definitely in bad taste to be bringing it up, especially since any incidences of them allegedly self-harming is completely irrelevant to this situation. They could not have inflicted that handprint bruise upon themselves. One tweet I want to make a note of here is this one. Are y'all not literally taking Nia's word without proof? This is quite literally he said, she said. In my eyes, and in the eyes of many bystanders witnessing this from afar, Kai has not proven that this altercation was due to self-defense, mainly because he has not bothered to try to supply any evidence towards this point in his narrative. Yes, people are taking Omnia's word with proof that they suffered physical abuse. All he has done is deflect from the abuse allegations and has hyper-focused on the monetary issue of him stealing Omnia's belongings. All his tweet spree has been is him admitting to taking things out of the apartment. His logic thus far has just not been sound, and he should have stayed off Twitter from the start. His legal team definitely has their work cut out for them. Kai was arrested for violating the protective order that Omnia filed against him, but was later released from jail. Omnia states that he posted bail, but Kai denies this. However, there's this thing called the victim's right to notice, which basically means that you're notified when someone is released from jail. Most likely, someone called Omnia and told them that Kai had posted bail. While Kai still denies posting bail, it is possible that the person who contacted Omnia on Kai's release didn't relay the correct information, I guess. I mean, cops are stupid, so I guess it's possible, but I don't know. Kai then got arrested a second time, but must have been released again, judging from how Omnia posted he had tried to call the police on them during a live stream. Omnia also states that they were facing stalking attempts by someone, suspicious that it might be Kai due to not having any stalking related issues prior to the breakup. Which I have found some sock puppet accounts with the same bio information, but no way to verify it personally if they belong to Kai or not. Lastly, some very petty things to know. I think it's awfully ironic that Kai has a very big issue with the fact that Omnia called the police on him despite him being black. But he also states in his Twitter and Twitlonger that he had called the police on Omnia despite the fact that they are black. And he goes on to accuse Omnia of blackfishing in their photographs, but they, again, are black, so I'm really not sure how that's relevant to anything that's happening, but okay, I guess. But that's what's been going on with Kai as of late. This video took a really long time to research and script because, in Kai's own words, You tweet way too much. It was just a lot of repetitive statements to shift through in order to find contradictions and other information. I just wanted to try to make sure that I delivered the information in a way that was respectful to everyone involved. It's really lucky that Omnia's new Twitter account was seen in the beginning of all this. They made a new channel on YouTube and regained their monetization fairly quickly, all things considered. Due to the head start that their channel has gotten from people flocking in to support them in their time of need, I'm sure their channel will flourish and thrive within the community. That being said, if you have not reached out to Omnia via Twitter or YouTube to show them your support through this horrible ordeal, I do encourage everyone to do so. If you or someone you know is going through abuse, please reach out to someone you trust to get help. No one deserves to live in fear of someone they are supposed to love. Please consider checking out or donating to groups that specialize in helping victims of abuse. A great place to start is Her Justice, a legal fund helping women living in poverty in New York.
They run off of donations and volunteer lawyer support. They offer advice and legal services to women suffering from domestic abuse. It is their goal to not only help abuse victims get away from their abusers, but also to help them find stability on their own once they are free. You can check them out and make a donation at herjustice.org or look for the link in the description. This video was brought to you by Patreon. Thank you so much to Nick Sanchez and Brigitte Bree for subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Minji, signing off. Until next time.